They've already been anointed as the champions. When we're talking about historically the best team ever, we gave two of the Heisman already. You're watching all of this happen. How do you feel watching it? I feel like it's disrespectful to the game I cover. Oh! Oh, oh, tell us why. Cole, Cole. Tell us why, Mr. Spears. Because we in si the sixth week of the season. Like, mm -hmm. just, just timing alone doesn't give you the right to say anything like that. Like, you can be excited about what's happening. I, yeah, I think we all good. are. Every, I mean, the, 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 the glimpse of greatness without a full plate of greatness is always fun, right? Remember when we saw Golden State coming on? And it was like, man. But then when they won the championship, now we can have a discussion about is this the greatest team ever, the greatest dynasty, whatever. Alabama right now looks like a video game, and I get it. Everybody's excited about that. But then I, I got to go into some of my college football mode. Before we start tagging greatest ever, bro, they've given up 54 total points the last two weeks. Mm. The great ones don't do that, and one thing not I know, in football. One thing I know about college football is upsets happen. All and, the time. And upsets happen. It's not like other sports, professional sports. No. Like college football, things happen that you do not expect, and it could happen to Alabama. It could, man. Could you see it happening against Georgia? Yeah. I can see it happening. I can see it happening against Georgia. Um, I think LSU plays them tough for a while. I think they eventually take, you know, take the reins. That's your in that alma game. mater. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to pick your alma mater over Alabama? Coach, I'm, I'm not. Objectivity ain't never been a problem for me. <laughs> if you're good, you're good. Now, I would love for LSU to be in this Bama conversation that we have it, but they not right now. Yeah. That ain't where they at. So we're, we're talking about where you played in college, but let's talk about where you played in the pros for a second. The oh. Dallas Cowboys. Oh, boy. So you're familiar with how things work there over in Jerry World. And um, Jerry's had a lot to say this year. He's been pretty vocal. He gets more vocal when they're not winning games. And uh, here's what he had to say about their roster. A true number one, you saw one the other night. You see Julio Jones, you see players like that. They're, in my mind, every team doesn't have a true number one receiver. When you put it in that class, those guys that just absolutely can change the ball game with where they, with where they are. And that hasn't been our case for uh, several years here, that we've had a true number one. Not a true number one. We'd like to have had one, like to have one, but we haven't. Huh. You know what? The more I think about it, the more I'm like, they really haven't had a number one wide receiver for quite some time. Cole, why, though? Because Jerry didn't pay one. So why in the hell would he say that? Because he's just complaining. He's rich. He's a rich guy. He wants to complain about things. There, there we go. Like, we've solved the issue, bro. Listen, Dez at one time was a one. Let's get that fair. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And then I was there when T.O. was there. He had three consecutive yep. seasons, 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. Of course. So it's been one since Michael Irvin. But from the time between Michael Irvin and when T.O. got there, legitimate the point. And then you got T.O. and then you got this. Miles Austin had a season like a number one yeah, or a two. season, and the Kardashian thing happened. Yeah, you're never supposed to yeah, do that. You yeah, never mix on. that with great play. Yeah, come play. on. Come like on, once, Miles. Once you do that, great play goes away. Yep. We all know that. But at the end of the day, man, it's your responsibility as a GM to have a one. I think so. So don't say that. This is the problem with Jerry Jones. What's right? the problem? He cares about this team, this franchise, he and does. he wants to win. I tell people that all the time. For as frustrated as people are about him, the number one thing Jerry cares about is making the Dallas Cowboys relevant in the in the conversation about Super Bowls, right? They've all they're always relevant in they're marketing. Always in the conversation. We're talking about them right now. Always We're in the talking about them right now. But his biggest thing, his biggest downfall is, is that he doesn't want to pull the trigger and be the guy that he needs to be Who's in order guy? to win a Super Bowl. Who's that guy? Go get the franchise. Guys, man. Go get them. Earl Thomas was out there like, hey. Yeah. I'm available. No, he not only that, he said he wanted to play for the he Cowboys. He wanted to play. Josh Gordon, I'm not, by no means am I saying Josh Gordon yeah, returns to Randy his Moss. normal he's form. He's not Randy Moss, yeah. By no means. But if he's available. He's available. You see what the Patriots traded for him? Why don't you entertain that? Because at the, at the minimum, Josh Gordon can create a situation where other defenses say, we have to pay attention to this guy. That might free up Cole Beasley, Allen Hearns. So here's the question. If he's, going to, if he's going to the Beyonce and Jay-Z concert with Des Bryant, like they're sitting together yep. for hours, why doesn't he just pick up Des Bryant? Des, why doesn't he? He knows more about Des Bryant than anybody else. Because it's not good marketing at this point. 
It's not good marketing. PR hit. The PR hit. It's not good. And, and the fact that that relationship ended on the football, if, if Jerry was to bring Dez back, I think it would look more like he put Dez above everything, every team dynamic that may be, a, may be happening with the Cowboys. Because mm-hmm. we know what this was about. We When T.O. was gone, it wasn't about production. No. It was about what he thought the perception of T.O. being on the team yeah. was. This same thing with Dez. Dez had eight touchdowns, 800 yards. That's not a number one receiver numbers, but that's this, damn sure better than what you, you got. You should have a job numbers. Come on, man. Well, coming back to the Steelers, Get a one. Le'Veon Bell. He's reportedly going to join the team. And Ben Roethlisberger was on the radio, and he had something very interesting to say about getting Bell back in the fold. In terms of just football player and running back play, it's been going up every week. I think James has done some amazing things that deserves to be on the football field. We also know what Le'Veon is and what he brings to the table. So um, I guess we'll cross that bridge when, uh, if and when it happens. Marcus, how should the Steelers handle the return of Le'Veon Bell? Play him immediately. You heard that, Chitley? Yeah, I did. Immediately. Immediately? First of all, you're paying him almost a million dollars a game, mm-hmm. all right? Which still blows my mind. Like, I'm with Le'Veon. I'm team Le'Veon. Sit out, get your money, stay healthy. Hopefully, you get a big franchise. But every time I see you losing seven hundred grand, it's every like hundred thirty-two. Yeah, think. yeah. Every every Sunday, that hurts me because that I want that. I want I that. I want it too. Right? I you want know what I'm saying? Too. So from that standpoint, yes. But then you got to understand the business side of the of the NFL. They're not going to sit you on the bench paying you 832 no, grand a week. And also knowing that you're not going to be on the team next year. Exactly. They're, they're going to try you. to run you down in the ground. They're exactly what they're going to do. Right? So I'm with, I'm with Ben because for all intents and purposes right now, James Conner is the future running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He looks good, too. He looks real good yeah. beyond this year. But when Le'Veon comes back, James Conner going to have to take a seat. That's fine. And that's fine. That, that's what I'm saying. So Ben is doing a good job keeping James Conner engaged. All right, keeping his, keeping him up and and involved in everything that's yeah. going on. But you know damn well when Le'Veon gets back, he gonna be in this offense. Le'Veon's gonna come back, and you're gonna come back on the show later. Absolutely. When we come back after break, we'll be joined by the great Ryan Rosillo. We'll be talking about unhinged Cillo. Jimmy Butler. That's my guy. I like that dude, man. I love him too. Yeah. You got to give me- 